you are. You can't even see. You want to get groomed Saturday though, but like, look at how cute my baby is. Bougie. Bougie, you're so cute. You're so cute. Hola buenos. If you're new here, my name is Dashi Imara. I'm your new favorite solo travel channel. I already made the decision for you, boo. Now today, I am going to tell you guys, you puppy lovers out there who want to, you know, get on a plane with your puppy, the tea. Okay, I'm going to break it down to you, what to expect, how much it's going to cost, how you should go about the day, like the whole nine, okay? Because I know y'all like me and y'all want to, you know, y'all don't want to leave y'all's baby at, at the house or with the nanny or at daycare. You want to bring them with you. So let's get into how to properly fly with your puppy. Okay, let's get into it. So here is my baby. This is Bougie. He is a one year old. He is actually, <gasps> he just turned 13 months. So he's born May 9th, 2021. And he's 12 pounds, but he's a poodle. So that means he's really, really long. So this is how long he is. Um, and I traveled with him not too long ago via Southwest back home to see my family. So I want to get into how I flew with him, what I prepared and what to expect. So number one, I flew with Southwest. Um, if you are flying with your dog, keep in mind every single airline is going to be different. So my experience, I've only flown Southwest with him. So the rules may apply through different airlines, okay? So let's just, you know, talk about the basics when it comes to flying your dog via Southwest. So when you are booking your flight, you want to make sure that you put in that you are bringing the dog with you. You do have to do that ahead of time. I'm not sure if it's a situation where you could just say that you're going to bring the dog with you once you get to the um, airport but I do know that say you apply you know you purchase your ticket you say you bring your dog and then you end up not bringing your dog that is fine that's totally okay but just keep in mind that you do have to mention that in your ticket when you are booking your flight now when it comes to the pricing it costs $95 both ways to take your dog on a flight with you via Southwest Airlines. And that is the cheapest price that I have seen across every single airline. That's very expensive, but I know some other airlines are 150, 125, it might be more expensive than that. So if you do plan on taking a puppy, baby, it's not gonna be free. Only circumstances where it's free is if it's a service dog, not emotional support, but a service dog. In that case, you would need to bring your dog with you. He's coming for leisure. There's, I don't need him for support. Well, I do, but you know, not in a medical way. So it's $95. Next, with Southwest rules, I have to keep him in his carrier under the seat. So there are some airlines you can have your dog sitting on your lap um, and things like that, but in Southwest, they have to be in the carrier under their seat. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you are taking your dog on a Southwest flight. All right, so now that we know how much it costs, how to bring your dog aboard, all of that thing, all of those things. Um, there are requirements for the carrier. So your dog has, they say your dog has to be in a carrier that's ventilated. I'll put like the size requirements on the screen. It has to be in a crate, you know, a bag that's ventilated. So you can't throw it in a duffel bag. I mean, if you're a dog owner, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't harm your puppy in any way. But it has to be an actual like dog carrier. If you don't have one, they will have one for you. Um, I'm not sure how much they cost. I want to say they're like, $75. I don't think they're super cheap, but they are. It's, it'll just be a Southwest bag. Um, and it has to fit under just like you, a carry on would fit under your bag or a personal bag. So those are requirements. There's size requirements, and it ha the dog has to be able to get up and turn around in the bag. So it can't be like super tight, and you basically shoved your bag, your dog, in a bag that's too, too small. Next, they also say on the website that your dog has to have up-to-date vaccinations um, things of that nature so that's saying that that's a requirement but I'm going to talk a little bit more about my experience and yeah so let's talk about the day we went flying the do's and don'ts and my experience personally flying my dog so I live in Atlanta Georgia so I'm aware that I'm not sure how every single airport works but they have these bigger uh, potty areas for dogs. I think they're mostly for service dogs, but everybody who has a dog and bring their dog to the airport takes their dog to the bathroom to go pee in there. So what I did, I had planned the entire day around my dog to make sure that when it came time for us being on a flight, that he was going to be comfortable. Now I am blessed that I have a mostly calm dog. He's literally laying right next to me, basically trying to go to sleep. 
So I don't, I knew I wasn't going to have to worry about him being too anxious, barking too much, or just not being cooperative or having accidents. So what I did, I think our flight was about three o'clock in the afternoon. Our flight was going to be an hour and a half. So I'm like, okay, this is a perfect amount of time for him to be in that um, bag under the crate. And it's a perfect amount of time for me to get up and try to get him going with his day, his, not his natural schedule, and him, us having a successful flight. So here's what I think you should do on the day of your flight and also what I do. Get up early and if you have an afternoon flight, I'm only going to speak from experience, and try to get your dog, play with your dog, and make your schedule just as normal as possible or maybe just give them a bit more love. This way you are building your dog up in his energy so by the time you get on the flight, they be like, girl, you, we've been playing all day. I don't got time for this. I'm exhausted. Leave me alone. Let me sleep in my carrier and go about my business. The idea is not to necessarily make them exhausted, but you want to get to the point where you guys are boarding the plane and on the flight that they are not bored and they want to play or they're too, you know, aware of what's going on and they want to, you know, be nosy. So the point is to t tire them out a little bit, but also, you know, make sure that they're loved and not the whole day is that they're just not doing anything. Because my dog gets too bored, that's when he wants to act up, okay? You can try to also make sure that they stay awake as long as possible before it's time to board. Because that will help with having them much more calm. Because they'll be much more excited. I mean, they'll be much more exhausted when it's time to get on the plane. So you don't have to worry about them wanting to get up. So play with your dog and try to get them a little bit more tired closer to the time to get on the flight, okay? Number three. Next, okay, so let's talk about a potty. So this is specifically going to be much more um, useful for puppy owners. Bougie was a puppy, he was a couple more months younger. Um, they, put, they potty much more frequently. So one rule of thumb is if you can help it, don't put your dog, don't fly with your dog longer than what he can hold his bladder. I think this might be an issue because you are more prone to have accidents and they're going to be much more anxious if they have to pee. So. He was at a point where he could probably hold his bladder for four hours maximum at the time. That's enough time for us to get through the airport, get on the flight, and get back to get to the next um, airport and take him to the potty. So what I did is obviously he could pee as much as he wanted to when we were home before we were leaving to the airport, but I made sure he peed right before we left and right before we, it was time for us to check in to the flight. So. No, no, right before it was time for us to board the flight. So I didn't want him to pee too much earlier for the flight and I didn't want him to be trying to pee as they're boarding. So if it was 10 minutes to board the flight, then we would go in that 10 minute round. Because I know we got a couple more hours just in case there was a delay or something like that. He's good for at least four hours. So you want to make sure that you go to the potty right before you leave your house on your way to the airport and right before it's time to board the plane. This will give your puppy a little bit more wiggle room um, to not have accidents and not need to go to the potty. So try to schedule those potty times throughout the day. And if you can, as soon as you get off that plane, if there's a potty available for dogs, try to get them to the potty as soon as, as, soon as you land because you know, being in the air, being they might be a little bit scared when they're up there. So you wanna make sure that they get to the potty. Next. Limit their food and water intake. This is something that I did switch up because I didn't want him to have too much food. Even though I took him to the potty, I didn't want him to have too much food or water on his stomach before while he was on the plane because then he would really have to use that. You know, it would up his chances of him having to use the potty. He's a puppy, so they have to go much more frequently than older dogs. So I let him have access to water at all the time like throughout the day but I wasn't like giving him the water like the water was there and I wasn't trying I was trying to you know make sure he wasn't drinking it too much but like if he's thirsty I'm not gonna be like no you can't have any water like that's no always give your puppy access to water but try to make it him not to be that interested in it if that makes sense food he only ate once that day but he was um he only ate once, so he had his meal in the morning, and while we were at the airport, I gave him a couple of snacks, but I wasn't making, I didn't give him a full-on meal before the flight. And he was old enough, he, you know, he only ate twice a day anyway, so it wasn't like it would be meal time had we not been traveling. 
So limit the food, limit the water intake so they won't have accident. They won't, yeah, they won't have accidents in their carrier or on the plane or anything like that. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Oh, another really important thing that I think any dog owner should do, especially a puppy owner, is to get to the airport much earlier than you would. Not because you don't want to miss your flight and you want to make sure you have enough time to get through TSA and whatnot, but getting your dog there early and getting them used to all the sounds and all the people walking around, there's going to probably be other dogs that are in the airport and they're going to the flight. You want to get them used to this new atmosphere. It's a lot going on in airports. I live in Atlanta. It's a busy ass airport, so there's a lot going on. So getting him there early, he won't be so anxious and like, what's going on? It's too much going on and freaking out. So what I did is once I checked in and everything, I went ahead and got to our gate early and I walked him around. Had him on a leash, walked him around the airport. I didn't hold him or put him in his carrier the whole time we were in the airport. Once we got down the escalators and um through the trains, I just let him walk on the leash. I let him walk around, sniff, look at everybody. I didn't want to hold him and scare him and um, kind of make him blind to what was going on basically i wanted him to see what was going on this is what's going to be reality for the next couple of hours and then when we could on the flight back so i wanted him to be used to everything that was going on all the different people all the sounds so if you can get to if you can get there much earlier and just walk with your dog let them walk around um that would be a really great idea now as far as flying through the atlanta airport and flying with southwest here's what to expect so when you get to the airport and you check in your bag you pay the $95 at the airport. So what you do is you be like, hey, I have this dog, you know, I need to pay the fee for it. And then you pay the $95 in cash or card and then they put a ticket on your carrier. Now they said in the rules on southwest.com that your dog has to be able to get up and, and turn around in their carrier and that the carrier has to be X, Y, and Z size. They didn't check either one of those. The lady at the gate didn't even see my dog. Nobody saw my dog until it was time to go through TSA. So I could, there could have been a damn iguana in there. I don't know, but I paid for, I paid for it. They didn't see the dog. They never checked vaccinations or anything. He was fully vaccinated because I'm not trifling, but the requirements I'm thinking like, okay, I need to have his papers ready on my phone. Let me get those ready. I need to be able to prove like, take him out the bag and prove that he could turn around in his carrier they just i just said hey i have this dog i have my dog i need to pay the fee they said okay and gave me the ticket to put around the carrier so when you go through tsa you have to hold the dog on you um when you and then you have to put their bag through after that your dog is free to go and after we got down the escalator and like i said through the trains i put him on the leash and we just walked around so then once it was time, then we went to the bathroom and then before it was time to board the plane, put him in his carrier and I left the open so he could see the line. And then once we got in there, I sat in the middle seat because usually the middle seats, the leg room is a little bit more wider. So had him in there. He was at a point like a little anxious, like poking his head out a little bit and moving around a bit. But after about a couple of minutes, he went to sleep. So it was a perfectly perfect flight. I'm so blessed to have a really great behavioral dog. Um, but that's just a little bit to expect. Always check the rules for whatever airline you're booking because what I, all I just said for Southwest could be different for Delta, American, United, Spirit, whatever the case may be. But for me personally, they did not double check if he was fully vaccinated. They did not double check if he could actually walk, spin around in his carrier. They did not check the size of the carrier verbatim to make sure it was the perfect size. Um, and yeah, nobody paid him any mind, nobody cared, and it was just a beautiful flight. So yeah, that, make sure y'all are just staying on it when it comes to all of this information. Get your dog in situations, and I think a good prep would to be like, put your dog in situations where they have to fucking sit still for a long time, and don't miss out on crate training. Crate training, I feel like, has been a major contribution contribution to how calm my dog is he's used to having to be in a confined space comfortable but a small confined space for a longer period of time for hours at a time he sleeps in his crate um he spends time in his crate during the day it's not just nighttime when he's in his crate so if your dog is used to having to sit still in their crate for a long time it's this will probably be a breeze for you but always always read the rules okay don't be dumb Okay, I also have a video on all of the beautiful things that I purchased for my puppy. Y'all should go check that out, okay?